Hello, Groove Tubers, and welcome to a new series with me, Blue Ankylo. Uh, we're just going to watch a short little intro video here, and uh, then we'll get to the actual game. I'll explain a little bit more about what's going on. Alright, it's Wargroove. It's new. It's hip. It's happening. So, um, <laughs> before we get started, uh, I've been, um, sort of following this one for a while before it got launched. This is, a uh, a pretty cool looking game, although I haven't actually played it yet, so we'll see if it lives up to the hype. Um, it's gonna be a lot like Advance Wars, if you remember that, from, uh, Game Boy Advance. There was a couple games. And it's also, it's got some things in common with Fire Emblem and all that, seeing as it's sort of, uh, uh, well, originally the Advanced Wars series, before it was Advanced Wars, was kind of a, the originator of the Fire Emblem series back on, like, NES days, ages ago. Anyway, this is a modern remaking that's not really tied to Nintendo or anything. Um, and it's the same guys that did Starbound, uh, from Chucklefish. They're related to Stardew Valley and all that stuff. So, uh, it's got some pretty cool style. And uh, I'm I'm pretty excited to get going here anyway. So if you haven't played Advanced Wars or Fire Emblem, we're looking at a, a turn-based strategy. Rather than Fire Emblem with like uh, persistent characters, uh, Advanced Wars style is more like uh, recruitable generic units on a map with a couple heroes. And you uh, there's a bit more economics involved rather than just uh, keeping your guys alive and learning their story. Same, similar, but, you know, anyway. I'm sure it'll make sense if we just start playing. So we're gonna just go with the campaign. Also, I really like these games, just like Stardew Valley and uh, Starbound and all that. Really nice detail. There's an awful lot of little bits. Like, in fact, even if we, uh, before we actually start the game, even on the options screens, there's just little things going on in the background, which probably don't mean much, but, you know, it's, that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I thought stuff like that's pretty cool. So, anyway, let's get going. One rainy night at Cherrystone Castle. Oh, this weather is giving me the spooks. Did you hear that? Good enough, it's just the thunder. But I'm, uh, I'm gonna go patrol the throne room. Throne room. Hey, uh, wait for me. Oh, what terrible guards! Cowards! Jumping at shadows and dropping their guard. They moved out of the way just as the castle got attacked, or thieveried, maybe. And getting to the king shouldn't be much of a challenge. <laughs> there he is, all alone in his chambers. How convenient. And the fewer guards I dispatch, the quicker this will be. But some unfortunate wretches still stand in my way. I'll start by defeating that one over there. So I assume we get a little tutorial here with Sigrid. So, uh, you know, fairly simple looking, you know, overview, map world. There's going to be some defenses for different territory. You can see little shields. I'm sure the tutorial will cover a lot of this stuff. Goodbye. <laughs> Ouch. Poor guy. She just floats over and smacks it, man. <sighs> oh, it's time my daughter learned the truth. But how do I tell her? I assume we're not his daughter, though. I'll make my way to the king's chambers. Yeah. Mercia. A long time ago, before Cherrystone was Cherrystone. Hmm. No. He's writing a letter, I guess. <laughs> this is laughably easy. It is true that we are ridiculously overpowered for this. 
I guess we can't really learn a whole lot about our character here. Oh, here we go. Look at that. The High Vampire of Western Felheim. She is an ancient smart and savage. Um, it's cool. Looks like there's some uh, some things we can learn. She's a commander unit that's effective against all kinds of stuff. Four moves. You know, this kind of stuff I'm sure will make more sense in the future, but I don't want to spend too much time getting bogged down in the details just yet. Not like it matters, but you have the same defense on carpet or cement. And uh, you can see the little preemptive, like, what's going to happen. These guards are almost dead. They're starting with, like, 10% health. So, like, there's no way... Are you afraid? <laughs> so we got this vampire lady just, uh, cruising around, killing all the guards. There was once a kingdom called Cacophony, and a war known as the Great Dissonance. Let me guess, you killed a bunch of vampires. And now they're coming for you. This knowledge was too great a burden. Oh, mercy. Oh, mercy. Hmm, this castle is vast. If I access the overview screen, I can get a glimpse of its true extent. I just need to select an unoccupied tile. Yeah, okay. It's a nice looking castle. Bigger than most Fire Emblem dungeons. Battles, maps, you know. The screen provides me with objectives and statistics. Hmm, so many humans. How unpleasant. Still, I can avoid most of them. I'm pretty sure she could just kill most of them too, to be fair. As my objective says, I'm here for the king. I can close and return to my task. No money or income this round. This is clearly just tutorial stuff. <laughs> Time to defeat a few more hapless guards and make my way to the king's chamber. There is a way to turn off these if you don't like watching them, but I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> At least for now, we'll be watching all of our cool battle animations. My little bluebird. I'll tell... I'll start slowly. My little... My darling bluebird, I need to tell you something. It's gonna be too late. He'll be dead. It's a very long story about something that happened a very long time ago. I'm gonna cut him down right before he can tell us the secrets. You Sorry, Merciful. It's a bad day. Bad night to be awake. It's a terrible storm. <sighs> a very long time ago, indeed. Why can't the past stay the past? This is it. I mean, we could go break down a door, I guess, and kill some more people, but... <laughs> These guys are at full health, so they might actually put up a real fight. Maybe. At last! You! How did you? What? Sigrid? <laughs> well, goodbye, King. Humans are so frail. Do you understand what you've just done? You'll start a war! <sighs> war? The inane squabble of children. Where is the key? Safe. You'll never have it. The key is in safe hands. Far from the grasp of a monster like you. <laughs> safe hands. Before you die, understand this. Nothing is safe for me. Listen. You're making a mistake. Hush now. Ooh, evil mode. <sighs> Didn't even know her final form. <laughs> Still, the key eludes me. No matter. <laughs> it's close. I can feel it. We got an S rating. That's just like Advanced Wars, getting ratings for not losing units and winning quickly. Okay. Yes. 
Well done, princess. Your skill with Cherry Blade improves yet further. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> I guess we have a good little guard dog. He's a little Caesar. He's got a little Roman helmet, little plume. Looks pretty awesome. It's all right, Caesar. It's just one of the royal guard. Lord Emmerich. Hmm? Why is this important? You disturb the princess's lessons. Ah, the king! My lord, the king has been killed! What? Oof, exactly. No! Yeah, bad day. I'm sorry. But heroes can never have living parents. I'm so sorry. Oh. This guy must be like a mage. Look at all these crystals. Who did this? Sir, the assailant appears to have been a vampire. The Felheim Legion. Princess Mercia, the murder of your father is an act of war. We must defend the kingdom. War? We're at war. That's pretty much how it works, as far as I understand. Congratulations! Awesome! <laughs> Alright, we're gonna keep going. Obviously, we're not gonna do uh, one mission in ten minutes and then end it there. But yeah, we're in the prologue. Doing fine. We move look at the map a little bit just to get an idea of how big this world is not too bad maybe there'll be more continents or islands later or something not too bad not too bad. an unsure mercia faces off her first test as monarch of cherry stone several months it took a long time to get here wow we walked really really slowly my queen. Congratulations on your coronation, coronation Queen Mercia. Emric, do you really think I'm ready to be a queen? I have no doubt. You are your father's daughter. Hmm. I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> the animations. Your Majesty, Felheim scouts have breached the border. What? They're here, in Cherrystone. Let's go. I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know you can. Just leave your crown behind. Who needs it? He's the king now. I mean, wait. Your majesty. I thought whoever got the crown was the king. All right. Some pumping music going on in the background. Uh, these skeletal warriors are Felheim troops. We must defeat them and secure the region. We should begin by attacking the closest Dread Swords with our unit of swordsmen. Right, let's get this over and done with. Alright, if you haven't figured out how to control your units yet, I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, a proper battle. Slicey slice. Stabity stab. Notice the numbers. Just like real life battling, there's numbers yeah. everywhere. That's how you know you're winning. Alright. These represent the unit's health. They appear when it below drops below 95%. You can see the little numbers. The number 5 indicates the dread sword is around 50% health. Hmm. And my swordsman is down to about 80%. Got Very it. Well. Then let's attack it with our second swordsman. It also affects their attack power. So the higher, the more, more strong you are, closer to 100%, the more damage you can deal. As you get weaker HP, you will um, also lose out on your offense. So you can kind of see, we'll just, well, we'll just kill them here. But if they were going to counterattack, we would take less damage than the first one. My queen, may I interject for just a moment? When selecting a target, the damage preview will appear and explain just what Blue Anki is telling you. The damage preview indicates the damage will be dealt by both units. Just like real war numbers pop up right before you do an attack tell you all about what will happen it's deterministic there's no randomness there's actually probably a small random but for the most part it's pretty accurate i believe the more damage unit takes the weaker its attack becomes yes yes learning look anyone who played advanced wars knows all about this goodbye skeletons Alright. Oh, they've got some reinforcements. 
More undead? It seems they're not giving up quite yet. We've only got two, though. How do we defeat three? Oh, we've got... We've got reinforcements. Friendly reinforcements have arrived. Just in the nick of time. <laughs> it's almost like it was fate. Look, it seems that we've been provided with a new type of unit, a pikeman. This might be a good time for you to learn about critical hits. Uh. Oh, boring. Yes. All units have conditions under which their attacks are stronger. We call these attacks critical hits. Oh, I'm like 20 years old and I've never heard of them. Do not worry, my queen. This information is easy to find. You should have learned it when you were a child. Let me show you how to find this information. Click the buttons. This is the title info. <laughs> we bring around a book that explains all about our soldiers anytime you want to learn about them. It's kind of like a Pokedex. Uh, yes. Useful information. Slow. Powerful. Can crit when adjacent to another spearman. Ah. Pikeman crits. It's so useful. Yes, you can bring up the screen at any time. I mean book. Use it often and you'll learn. All right. Thanks, Tutorial Dad. When you're ready, you can close the window. Thank you for telling me that. Um, so it tells you about the roads. That's probably the movement range for different types of uh, characters, I would assume. Um, so these guys can move three squares by foot, which is a style of movement. Um, so they're slower than swordsmen, and they, they can move four, right? And they are effective against a bunch of units. I assume spears probably beat, like, Horses and stuff. I don't know if we're going to have a weapon triangle, but, you know, we'll figure all that out. And I like the uh, adjacency crit thing. That's cool. Very well. We should make sure the pikemen stick together. They're going to force me to do this a specific way. But I could attack him right now. It'd be better to just hit him twice. Look, we could do 80% if we just killed him right in here. And then the second guy could finish him off. We've lined up our first pikemen. Let's attack the dreadsword with our second. This is going to put the second guy in risk of being attacked twice. Unless we kill him in one hit. But, yeah. We'll kill him in one hit. That's fine. Then. <laughs> Let me draw your attention to the damage preview. Yep. A flashing arrow in the damage preview is a good sign. It indicates you're about to land a critical hit. You know, they should be resistance to piercing or something. They're skeletons. Mm, thanks for the placement of that yes. first pikeman. Alright, well yes, that was quite convenient. Okay, that's good. Keep your pikemen together will ensure stronger offense. Yeah. Alright, we'll learn all about new soldiers. Just delete, defeat the last two on your own. Thanks! It's also a man. Alright, this is going to be very difficult. There's no way we can possibly figure this out on our own. Hey! hey. Some nice little sound effects. I like it. Oh, I guess we can see, like... You just give up. I was thinking there'd probably be, like, a mission objective or something. Oh, look at all these controls. You can check out your towns. We make money out of them. Mountains have a ton of defense. Roads have none. Forests are three. Um, a little bit of an overview. Ooh. Maybe if you had a really big map, you could use that. Okay. Anyway, we should be fine. 47% is more than enough. We are still clearly in the tutorial. It's not like this will be very difficult yet. If it's anything like Advanced Wars, it will get fairly difficult, though. Alright, we took a fairly big hit there. What I think what we'll do is we'll move those guys out of the way and then finish them off with the other one. Thing is, we know that we can one-shot them with a critical anyway. And that's the last of them. Well done, my queen. <laughs> so happy. 
A good start, but Felheim won't stop there. We must remain vigilant. What? Fighting a few skeletons doesn't mean we won the war? Yes. Yes, indeed. And in greater numbers, they will come. Oh, a whole horde is like what necromancers do. Indeed, and much else besides. I'd forgotten you had so little experience with the undead. <sighs> oh, but Cherrystone is so normal and peaceful. I've never seen them here. But now they're coming, and they won't stop. It's like anyone who knows anything about the undead should understand. All undead but one. We've spoken in your lessons of their leader, Vald. Mm -hmm. A living man and... Yeah. And a necromancer of great power. I remember one thing. Well, we should make a move. The undead are likely to be advancing upon other parts of the kingdom. Uh... Think Valder will come? No, yes. he'll leave you alone. I mean, yes, he'll come. <laughs> Can't have the game be too easy or anything. Oh, <laughs> the royal guard's still chasing us with his crown. Hey everybody, we got another S rank. I mean, nothing to worry about yet. <laughs> Should we do one more today? These are going pretty quick. You've lo you've unlocked additional lore. Should we learn? How do we learn? I don't want to replay. You can you can replay missions. Like you can change the difficulty. What am I playing on? Oh, I'm oh that's actually pretty cool. You can uh, wow. Yeah, that would change things. That would definitely change. We're just going to leave it at normal for now. That's really cool. You can you can really, really change how the difficulty works. The intended war group experience. So you can, you can start with more income, but you can't get three stars. Or you could basically have no income and then play it on difficult. That's actually really cool. I guess this just adds probably enemy units or something. The groove charge or maybe it affects some sort of random luck number. That's neat. I like this. That's really cool. I mean, yeah, we'll play on default for now. Uh, Codex. That's what I wanted to see. We've learned about Mercia. Though Mercia must find her feet as the new ruler of Cherrystone. Her inexperience is counteracted somewhat by her commitment, loyalty, and compassion. She's a talented commander and a natural leader. Though she still needs the guidance and support of her friend and tutor, Emmerich. And that's all... Oh, wait, we know a little bit more. Mercia and Emmerich. Emmerich has always been in Mercia's life, and she can't imagine a world without him. Any more than she could a world without her father. After the death of Mercia's mother... See, she's got no living children. She's she's destined to be our hero. When she was just six, Emmerich's steady, quietly loving presence kept her and her father going. Officially, Emmerich is her future. But she has always considered him family, as did her father. Well, one day, maybe we'll have a healing aura. Oh, there's your groove stuff. Groove charge. Ah, looks like it's got a pretty wide area of effect. That'll be neat. Damage matrix. Ooh. So she is specifically good against a couple things. And then weaker against other things. I mean, I don't really know which one is which for this, but... That's really cool. I like the fact that they've got all this built in. Like, I, I figured the... Uh, the quality of this game would be pretty high. Like, there's, there's a good production quality here. Uh, let's learn a little bit about Emmerich, and then we'll continue. I mean, obviously, there's there's all kinds of things to learn about, but for now, we'll just stick with a couple at a time. Emmerich is an immensely powerful mage, well-versed in arcane lore. He is a scholar, and a knowledge, and his knowledge, alongside his tactical know-how and compassionate wisdom, have made him the indispensable advisor to Cherrystone's throne. Beyond that, he is a kind, if reserved, individual who cares... Fiercely, for the late King Merciful and his daughter Mercia. Emmerich is the youngest son of a noble Cherrystone family. His siblings, twins, were 15 years his senior, which meant that he had a somewhat solitary childhood. He took refuge in his studies and devoured books voraciously. Yum yum. From a young age, he showed a deep interest in and talent for the arcane mystical arts. He was a dedicated student who soon outstripped his tutors to become the leading mage of his generation. He gets a cool little defense shield. That's actually not very little. It's cool. He makes a little crystal that defends everybody. Lots of cool stuff for the future. 
more matrixes. Cool. I will, you know, sporadically check in with some of those things just to see kind of some lore as we play along. We'll probably learn about our dog next time. The Felheim invasion begins in earnest. I mean, these guys are doing pretty good. And then they run back the other way with 15 skeletons chasing them. No. Oh, the kingdom's overrun with Felheim soldiers. Uh. We have to do something. Mm. We will hold what land we can. Hmm. Maybe if we... Not so fast. Huh? Uh, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the person that's going to smash bash and pulverize you. Yeah. Does she have little dragon wing things, or are those ears? Maybe it's part of her hat. Fight me! I'm so glad I don't have to do all the voiceover. <laughs> Alright, we've got ourselves a barbarian with little dragon wings. Hey, leave that house alone! Stole one of my houses. Did you see that? The Felheim hordes just captured a village. At least they're not like the axe guys from Fire Emblem that just burn them down immediately. They'll attempt to claim the neutral village to the east next, unless we stop them. Then let's stop the yeah, yes. think. Luckily, a cherry stone ranger is here to help. Rangers are units that can attack enemies from a distance. Ah, indirect fire, our favorite. Let's move it to a position from where it can attack any approaching undead. I sure hope it's better than your classic Fire Emblem archer, though. At least Game Boy Advanced here. Alright. You can hide them behind the mountains. I guess a lot of the question is how many tiles it can shoot. If it's only like two tiles, it'll kind of suck. If it's three, it's pretty good. If it's four, it's amazing. From this position, our ranger can attack any enemies approaching from the west. Very well. When you want to end your turn... Yeah, that's fine. Can I just... Oh, I don't have any money. These guys are pretty expensive, though. Move and attack the same turn. They critical hit when they're stationary, though. Interesting. So they're definitely your biggest... Like, they are defensive units, 100%. Hold still, fire arrows. Critical hits when they're beside each other. They move slow. Oh, they got range 3. Nice. That's pretty good. Anything with a 3-tile range is acceptable. It's just the 2s are particularly hard to deal with. Uh, that's good. you will capture... Moves faster, maybe a little bit less strong. Critical hit next to a commander. Looks like pikemen are probably better most of the time. Unless, yeah, because these are only effective against one thing. Okay, good enough. But I don't have any money yet. Next turn. So he said, uh, this way, okay. We're going to learn. So they're recruiting new skeletons too. Are you remembering to check the unit? No, I've never done that. Yeah. Good, then you'll know the ranger will crit if you know, don't move. Attack the Dreadsword, then. Yeah, I guess you can see their attack range while you're moving, so you can move to here and then 1, 2, 3 for attack. But that would be not a crit. Oh, right, something, something, something. We don't want to move, so just... Oh, hold still and then attack. Yeah, that's fair. 100% damage from an archer. That's pretty strong against skeletons. I mean, I guess it's a crit, but still, that's really strong. Very rarely do I remember indirect fire being so powerful in, in these kinds of games. I guess it's their weakest unit, but, you know. Standing in a zero defense tile. We may have defeated those soldiers, but it's not over yet. The enemy owns a barracks and will enable them to recruit new units. Fortunately, we have access to a barracks of our own. We should select it and recruit a unit. Yep. Uh, what are we looking at? One, two... So if I started here, one, two, three, four. I might want a swordsman just to capture the town quicker. And I only have enough money for a swordsman anyway. The barracks lets you recruit different types of units. Swords, pikes, rangers! That's right, but due to our funds, only a swordsman. A single swordsman can make a big difference. Yeah. That's what I will do then. Makes sense. They let you choose where to deploy them. 
In uh, Advanced Wars, they generally just started on top of the spawner, basically. Note that barracks can only recruit a single unit per turn. Alright, we got a skeleton. <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Alright, Skelebro... Not Skelebro, Swordbro. And then Capture. So I guess towns don't really have any defense. It only fills up half here, though. I'm curious what the other half is. Two turns of capturing? Excellent work, my queen. Villages bring in 100 gold per turn, so they're incredibly important. Right! More gold means more units. Correct. In fact, we can cripple the army by taking their village. Yes. Yes! Yes! <laughs> if it's owned by a different faction, we must first defeat it. All right. Recruit more! Now, we can only recruit one per turn, so we might as well recruit stronger units. Some units are more effective at defeating structures than others, such as... I advise you to rely on the pikemen. Alright, that was kind of what I was thinking anyway. They're a little bit slower, but... Maybe that's supposed to be a house? I don't know. Uh, these guys can move how far? Four moves. So they're basically the same as our swordsmen. Oh yeah, like exact, exactly the same as our swordsmen. So we're looking at one... Takes two moves to go through there, I think. So he's going to be able to go one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, f one, two, three, four. So he'll end up the same place as his buddy. Uh, I'm just trying to decide if I want to start moving my uh, archer a little bit closer. Which I probably should. We'll start moving closer so we got better... You know, we want to take this city, basically. Oh, they're coming from the other side, too. Sneaky! Well, the, the forest is still... A, or the mountain is probably a better place to leave the archer anyway. Enemy reinforcements from the north. They'll no doubt be heading towards your northern villages. I should have known they wouldn't make this so easy. I suggest you don't leave the northern path unattended. Maybe I'll need to leave the archer up there then. Boo. Alright. Oh, this one went up a little bit. Is it, uh... I guess it just regenerates on its own? Once you've captured it, it's yours and it heals. Sort of like a garrison builds up over time. Well, we don't want to give this guy first strike. Not like it will matter too much. Um, I was just trying to decide what the safest way to deal with this will be. I guess with double pikemen, they'll probably be strong enough to deal with anything. We'll probably just leave the archer to deal with stuff up north then. Try to get into the forest, maybe block the bridge or something. It depends on how many free units they get. Alright, well we did set up a very nice um, critical hit here, so that worked. Lovely. All right, this guy's going to be able to move closer. I think we'll set up the same crit combo here. Or no, that won't work. Well, I'll be able to, as long as I'm... Yeah, because I can move this guy to here next turn, and this guy can crit this guy if he, if he moves to here like I expect. We'll just move the swordsman first, out of the way. And then up here, he's going to get to there. One, two, three. So from here, we'll be able to kill him. Also, we're in the forest. So if the, if the second one gets an attack, we'll get, uh, we'll get some defense there. Yeah, the second one will be able to hit us, but that should be okay. We can only kill one, so, you know, we'll kill the one that's closest. 
Good job, archers. Alright, so then down here... We're going to use this guy. We're going to move the pikemen up so we get a crit, so we don't take any counter damage. I mean, we could want to see, like, from here what it would look like. 54, 17. It'd be a waste of taking some damage, though, to be honest. Ooh, those towns are pretty tough. I mean, what else am I going to do with the swordsman, though, right? So... Mmm, they got a little rain of arrows. Neat. And then I will be in a nice line so that next turn my pikemen should be able to hopefully take the town anyway. Yeah, because this guy will be able to move with the, with the uh, adjacency. You know, I think I forgot to recruit something last turn. I'm saving up for more rangers. That's what I wanted. I actually just totally forgot, so excuse me. <laughs> Whoops. Alright, let's see what happens. Well, they're pretty good in melee. I mean, that's I guess that's what you'd expect. Now, can we shoot? So we can fire point blank, or at least we can attack, which is good, because a lot of the problems with indirect fire units in other games is that they can't actually fire adjacent. They have to move and then shoot, and sometimes that doesn't actually work, but... So the fact that they can still attack in close combat is pretty handy. Let's start down here, though. Because uh, I may have sort of messed up by not recruiting anything up there. Let's... We might not get a three stars this time. Good, we can finish this off instantly. Yeah, I like pikemen. How did this happen? <laughs> Excellent, you've cleared the enemy village. You should capture it to secure it before Ragna takes it back. So maybe that'll be this guy's job. Now I wonder if it starts with less than five because we're not at full power. Yeah, we get maybe half of their strength. That's probably how it works. Well done! With no village, the enemy has no income. You'll notice that a captured structure never begins with full health. Yeah, I did notice that. In fact, it starts with the equivalent of half the capturing unit's health. Wow. Yes, so if you capture a 40% health unit, the village will start with 20% health. Yes! Now we should destroy the barracks to remove them from the region. Yeah. Alright, he's going to be able to attack one of my pikemen here. So we might as well move up into the grasslands. I guess. And then over here, so there's kind of a problem. This guy can move four squares, same as me. I guess we move into the grass, take a shot. Hopefully that'll lower him enough that he can't kill us next turn. We can reinforce. I assume that maybe replenishes, but... I think this is maybe still a better idea. I would be surprised if they can one-shot us like that. And then, for sure, the ranger will be able to kill him next turn. Yeah, I should have definitely, you know, recruited an additional ranger earlier, or some unit. At this point, it shouldn't matter. We've got enough units to win. Alright, you attack my pikes. A little bit of damage. And come on, rangers don't die. Good. I mean, you're pretty much useless now with that much, that little health, but we'll be okay. This is why we have this guy. I did at least get one reinforcement. So it looks like the north route, one group of archers is probably not enough to keep yourself safe. Unless you can find a better choke point for them. But anyway, that's good. Uh, let's see, down here... I don't suppose you can kill this guy on your own. No. It's unfortunate.
We need to go capture their barracks, clearly. Maybe I should have recruited another unit. <laughs> Probably a ranger on the southern road would have made this a lot easier, to be honest. Well, actually, didn't... Right, we can just heal up. You just pay some money to heal up, right? That's maybe also the other thing. I... Maybe that's what I should have done with this pikeman. Alright, we're learning, we're learning a thing or two as we go. Because... Obviously, I'm. I didn't realize you could reinforce. I don't think you could do this in in like advanced wars or anything. So this is kind of new for me. Spend all my money. Why not? Oh, they take out of the uh, village health to restore. That's also kind of important to know because we'd. I wonder if you'd lose your town if you. Interesting. That is definitely a neat little little thing. We can do 56% damage, or we move one over. We can do a crit, but they're in the they're in the forest, so we're not doing max. We might not one shot them, right? But pretty darn close. Yeah, it doesn't really matter much. I'll make sure they're. Just thinking, it might be better to have. Like, yeah, I think really what we want to do is just capture this and then end the mission. If I if I don't get three stars this time, it's okay. I'm still learning. Yeah, it looks like the towns regenerate 10% per turn, and you can kind of spend it plus gold to heal your units, which is, which is pretty cool, actually. They did get an extra guy. And they ignored my soldiers... Probably smart to try to take the town, but in fact, they just suicide. So not very smart at all, actually. Okay, neither pikemen can make it to the town, but we can set up another crit and nearly one-shot this, this skeleton. It's, that's always the trick, is getting them off of 100% health, even if... Even if you take a small counter, but that prevents them from doing any significant damage, so. And I know the Swordsman's not very good at this, but we've got to start doing damage. I, I don't think these Rangers are going to be able to do anything. You know, if you sent two Rangers up, you could probably start killing them from this mountain here. While your pikemen just take the barracks. That that might have been a cool way to do this mission. No, I think you just killed yourself there, skeleton. Goodbye. And they didn't even recruit anything. They must be out of money. Alright, yeah. Pikemen's do a fair bit more damage. And I think this is the last turn. No! No, this is not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Well, you have been defeated. The skeletons just fall apart. Uh, go away. <sighs> I said go away. like the skeletons are maybe not as autonomous as normal undead would be. They kind of have their own personalities. Huh. What are? I said go away. Oh, it's you. Yeah. Uh. I uh, didn't mean to disturb you. We should probably just kill him right now. He's an enemy combatant that invaded our land and probably killed countless civilians. Just finish him off. Yeah. You didn't disturb me. I was lying in wait. Huh. Uh huh. Shut up! <laughs> this isn't over. I mean, it could be over right now. Just... Hey, we still got a three star. I mean, I felt like I did a little bit worse in terms of turns. I bet you could probably beat this in like at least ten, if not nine turns. But the game's generous enough to give us an S rank, so that's great. 
anyway, that was more than long enough. Uh, we're going to end our episode here. And next episode, we will continue. I normally try to keep my episodes around 30 minutes. Today's been a little bit long because, you know, trying to finish the tutorial quick. Um, but thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying. I'm uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this as, as a pretty solid game and a fun little series. So, uh, hope you stick around and enjoy some more next time. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. Luenkilo out.